This video is brought to you by Ground News. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, today I wanna to begin by defining a phrase, the economics of superstars. Now, it's important to do this because the topic of CEOs and overpaid executives cannot be fully discussed without understanding what's actually happening, and what's actually happening is the economics of superstars. Standard economic theory suggests that those with more talent should be paid more, and you would be fairly hard-pressed to find someone rational who disagrees with that basic premise. An obvious example of this would be doctors or surgeons, where markedly superior skill equates to a literal increase in patient likelihood of survival, in the case of surgery or diagnostic medicine. Since there is a relatively low number of highly skilled doctors and surgeons in the population, a small change in their relative skill can equate to a very large discrepancy in salary. A doctor who is, say, 5 or 10% better than their peers at diagnostic medicine can be paid tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars more because that small discrepancy in talent is extremely impactful to the patient and for the hospital. It quite literally saves additional lives, if we're being honest, which incentivizes higher cost. This type of superstar economics is rational, but there is a particular economy of superstars that is irrational, and today we're going to discuss why. First things first, the group I'm talking about is CEOs, because there is a twisted and mentally deficient assumption in modern America, and also the world, though America serves as a hyper-exaggerated example, to be sure, that the more money you have, or the more money you make, the more intelligent or talented you must therefore be. This is an intellectually bankrupt assumption, because the fact of the matter is that there is absolutely no correlation between wealth, talent, and intelligence whatsoever. Millionaires and billionaires, the kind that some people idolize, imitate, and elevate inside their own minds to a position of moral authority, so much so that they will even strive for and boast about their proximity to these figures. These people typically have no discernible above-average talent of any kind. Research from Cornell University aimed at analyzing the role of randomness in success and failure found that, quote, an important result of the simulations is that the most successful agents are almost never the most talented ones but those around the average of the Gaussian talent distribution, another stylized fact often reported in the literature. The model shows the importance, very frequently underestimated, of lucky events in determining the final level of individual success. Since rewards and resources are usually given to those that have already reached a high level of success, mistakenly considered as a measure of competence slash talent, this result is even a more harmful disincentive, causing a lack of opportunities for the most talented ones. Our results highlight the risks of a paradigm that we call naive meritocracy, which fails to give honors and rewards to the most competent people because it underestimates the role of randomness among the determinants of success." End quote. In essence, the millionaires and billionaires that these sheep, for lack of a better word, all look up to and strive to emulate are nothing but an average coalition of significantly lucky individuals who are now treated as exceptional by measure of wealth as if it were a proxy for competence and talent. Why am I talking about this? Well, here's a list of the S&P 500 CEOs and their relative compensation packages. Tens of millions of dollars per superstar, often 100 or 200 times the median household income in the United States. And this particular group of superstars are often traded between companies like the star players of a basketball team, increasingly wealthy, increasingly high compensation, and escalating benefits. Now, according to standard economic theory, if talent were to be the determining factor, one might expect that these CEOs are disproportionately skilled, therefore justifying their disproportionate pay scale. However, the painful truth here is that the most overpaid people on the planet do not deserve the money. Let me just round out the context here. Since 1978, CEO compensation, using the top 350 firms in the US as a sample here, has skyrocketed over 1,460% to where they are now paid roughly 400 times higher than an average worker. Comparatively, since 1984, according to the average wage index, workers have gone from $15,250 annual compensation to $58,129 in 2021. When factoring for inflation, however, $15,250 in 1984 was almost $38,000 today, meaning that while workers might see an appearance of wage growth, what they really have is relative stagnation. Now, as I talk about CEOs and the economics of superstars, it quickly becomes clear that these superstars don't play by the same rules as the rest of us. When you get fired, they tell you to clear out your desk, and you're lucky to even get legally required benefits without having to specifically fight for them. When they get fired, they make millions even as the companies they purportedly manage deteriorate completely. 
It's actually incredibly rare for a CEO to ever be held fiscally accountable for anything. They might get ousted from the company with a few media headlines in tow, perhaps, but they almost always receive golden parachute bonuses or massive windfall stock awards in the process. Randall Stevenson, prior CEO of AT&T, as just one example, made $32 million during the same pandemic fiscal year that the company fired 20,000 workers. That's over 500 times the average salary in the United States, solely to a man who presided over 20,000 people losing their jobs during a pandemic. To me, it's a damn shame, but there are, on occasion, examples where a company will take some degree of action. Qantas, an Australian airline company, is one such example, and I only know about this example because of today's video's sponsor, Ground News. The gist of it is that Qantas was booking thousands of tickets on flights that were already cancelled, leading to intervention from regulators, yet the superstar CEO was taking a 900% pay increase on his way out the door. Thankfully, the company is clawing back some of his bonus pay and reducing short-term incentives, but examples like that are few and far between. Normally, chief executives will reap enormous rewards even when they steer the company into the dirt, and I wouldn't have been aware of that example without ground news. The complexity of modern media with intertwining issues of bias, partisanship, and corporate influence demands some sort of solution. After a six-month vetting process, I decided to work with Ground News, which is an app and website that compiles sources worldwide in one place providing different perspectives. Each story showcases coverage details and bias distribution, which provides a better level of transparency. For example, with this story, we can see that 10 sources covered it and roughly equal distribution from the left, center, and right side of the political spectrum. What I like about Ground News is that for each article, you can see individual tags determining the ownership, factuality, and bias, like, for example, this left source versus this right one. They make it incredibly easy for you to compare headlines, revealing disproportionate coverage to break out of echo chambers and individual outlet dominance. For each source, they are assessed on a publication level for bias and factuality by three different news monitoring organizations. This process ensures that Ground News maintains objectivity and transparency, so they can focus more on offering context rather than dictating reader perspective, which is extremely valuable. In my individual research, Ground News has become a relatively indispensable tool, offering access to view all sides of every story. I'm excited to have them as a continued sponsor on the channel because they're an independent and subscriber-supported platform contributing to media accountability, which is huge for me. Go to ground.news slash echelon with the link down below to take advantage of their best deal this year. You'll get 40% off unlimited access to their app, website, and newsletters. Big thank you to Ground News for sponsoring the channel. So having established the abominable scale of compensation and the relatively unique set of rules that these executives play by, one might somehow still expect that their performance can justify all of that. After all, keeping with our example of a surgeon or a doctor, superstar economics kind of makes sense. However, this is where I have to draw from research and connect a series of dots. According to analysis on CEO compensation by Xavier Gabay and Augustine Landier, who developed mathematical formulas for measuring relative compensation and performance, most importantly, from page 84, quote, plugging in the numerical values mentioned above, the last number is 0.016%. This number means that if firm number 250 could, at no extra salary cost, replace its CEO for a year with the best CEO in the economy, its market capitalization would go up by only 0.016%. This is arguably a minuscule difference in talent." End quote. Now, I should add here that this is referring to very large, well-established companies. There is a very clear ability for CEOs to damage the company they work for by making objectively asinine decisions. But when discussing the performance of an established entity, the math demonstrated here seems to indicate that they have effectively zero impact on upward mobility. And yet, a CEO who has no positive impact whatsoever is increasingly rewarded with compensation growth year after year, dwarfing every other position type in the world. The question is why? We are witnessing a group of people earning tens or hundreds of millions of dollars per year, escalating that pay scale at a rate above anything they could ever deserve. But why? And the answer to that why is everything. According to research from the Illinois University Economics Department as far back as 2007, analyzing changes in money supply related to stock market prices, quote, the results of this study suggest that the real activity hypothesis dominates Keynesian theory. The results support the view of the real activity hypothesis that a positive money supply shock would increase the stock prices and vice versa. The results also support the opponents of efficient market hypothesis that anticipated change in money supply matter more than unanticipated changes in money supply in determining the stock prices." End quote. Effectively, money supply is a driving force behind stock market prices, aka market capitalization for major companies, but going further as far back as 1990. According to Harvard Business Review, there was virtually no link between how much CEOs were paid 
and how well their companies performed for shareholders. How is that possible? Simple. Massive infusions of capital into the United States economy, among others, create upward pressure on market capitalization, especially for major top 350 companies. In turn, the CEOs of those companies are able to harvest enormous compensation packages and leverage their career prospects further, despite being holistically undeserving of that pay scale. Even worse, we can see the effects of cash infusion in separate but related fields as well. A unicorn startup refers to a startup company valued at over a billion dollars. Historically, hence the name, they are quite rare, as one might expect. However, in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, after an unprecedented amount of money was injected directly into the United States economy at nearly every single level, particularly concentrated in the hands of existing large companies who abused the framework with impunity, there was a massive spike in the number of unicorn startups that broke onto the scene as a function of venture capital. According to Inc.com, 2021 spawned more unicorns than the past five years combined, and yet immediately afterward, they came crashing back down to earth. Why? Because they should never have existed in the first place. The only reason they did is because excess capital was injected into the market, allowing hundreds of people to join the ranks of the CEOs, despite the failure of a company they helmed being nothing more than a parasite in the aftermath of irresponsible government spending, where they can now leverage that position, for what it's worth, into a never-ending, nearly exponential increase in pay scale and stock options as they engage in the economy of superstars who aren't actually superstars and typically bring nothing of a mathematically measurable value to the table. Bottom line, a small group of people, the CEOs, which I cannot possibly say with more venom even if I tried, are being paid hundreds of times more than their peers despite having no actual talent beyond them. They are perceived as intellectually or talentedly superior as a result of the non-merit-based success they already have, leading to compensation that rises faster and further than anyone else around them, despite being and contributing nothing of actual unique value. Their compensation and performance are mostly decoupled from shareholder returns, and while it can be argued that the lack of downside impact by a CEO is probably worth paying for, so they don't run your company into the ground with their idiocy, it should also be understood that when government monetary policy has more impact on market cap than average CEO performance by far, yet these executives are being compensated 400 times higher than anyone else around them, there's a fundamental problem. The economy of superstars can be seen in a variety of contextual situations. Sports, of course, medicine, commerce, etc. But when it comes to executives and their pay scale, you have a group of people who are categorically not more talented, typically do not impact the company in sizable or upwardly mobile ways, but are still compensated hundreds of times higher than they should be on a trajectory that increasingly harvests more than their fair share <laughs> excessively, which they do not deserve. CEOs simply do not perform a job that justifies the pay they receive, and this can be mathematically supported. They demonstrate no actual superstar service or skill set that justifies it, yet they reap the downstream reward of massive inflation and irresponsible government monetary policy with no adequate performance-based reason, aka the most overpaid men and women in the world. That's it. This video came as a result of a viewer's comment asking me to look at CEO pay scale, so I did. It was infuriating because the common delusion that a millionaire or billionaire is somehow authoritative, intelligent, or inspirational simply because of the existence of capital is possibly one of the most brain-dead subconscious impressions I have been able to observe in modern society, and a lot of people suffer from it. Anyway, you can probably tell I got passionate about this topic, and there's reasons for that, which most of you will probably never know, but I'll cut it there. Check out Ground News, good service, quality sponsor. There's other stuff down there as well. Uh, links, uh, merchandise coming soon, memberships, Patreon, locals, uh, cybersecurity product affiliate list, all sorts of things. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, question everything and have a nice night.